the show G, I would say, has been out of this world. So oh, far. you might be right about that. And as long as things are getting out of this world on this show, man, we may as well talk about some of that good space oh. shit out here this evening. Yes. Oh, I love this fucking bumper, too, man. Oh, the next frontier. Yes. You love to fucking see it, man. Guys, there has been a lot of interesting shit happening in the world of space travel here recently. What's crazy to me is that stuff keeps happening that people not too long ago said was completely fucking impossible, right? That's what we always think. So-and-so is impossible, and then technology comes in and throws you for a loop. That happens right. sometimes, Bill. You know what I mean? All the time, thankfully. Now, luckily for you, you yeah. watched the Fright Power Hour, man. Now, we'll start it off easy today. I don't know how many of you got to look at this yesterday, but there was a hell of an interesting fucking lunar eclipse. Yeah. Yesterday evening. All right, now that's that doesn't really have anything to do with space travel. I'm just putting it out there. It just Hopefully looks cool. Hopefully some of you got a chance to see it. It was very cool. Now, some of the stuff we're putting out there into space, we're trying to get into a situation where we send things out there for the long haul, right? We're getting ready to try to colonize. So we need things that can last a long period of time, even in that sort of environment. For instance, you might remember a couple of years ago, we reported on it on this show, Light Sail. A uh, solar sail, big piece of plastic type cloth, sort of, some kind of polymer or some shit. They sent it out there to see if it could collect energy over a long period of time, right? Right. And two years later, it's still out there doing fine. Now, is two years a uh, permanent, long term test? Uh, maybe not. I'd say it's a pretty good I'd say it's start. It's a pretty good, accurate gauge to start. From. Right, right. It's at least worth making a couple of these and trying to charge up some fucking batteries sure. with them, man. Besides, shit's getting a little bit wild out there in low Earth, low Earth orbit with as many people that are trying to use it right now. You need power to be able to get out of the way when shit goes wrong. Now Putin plays havoc in space. The United States accuses Russia of dangerous and irresponsible behavior after seven ISS astronauts were forced to take refuge in lifeboat pods when Kremlin anti-satellite missile test created 1,500 pieces of debris. Oh, dude. What the fuck? First of all, I love that we still use the word Kremlin. Right. Yeah, it's great, man. And secondly, man, they're trying to make debris in space. That's our fucking job, dude. Kremlin sounds like gremlin. So you need plenty of fucking power to make sure everything goes right while you're out there in space, man. We're right. getting there. And by the way, can we just talk about anti-satellite mission? Uh, anti-satellite missile, excuse me. Right. You know what and I mean? What are they doing out that there? That sounds like something we need to be all caught up with. Right. Man. How do the other people on the ISS not talk to those guys about that well, shit? Luckily, we know? are making a move. SpaceX and NASA plan to crash a satellite into an asteroid next week. We're just going to see what happens. Well, okay. I like it. All right. They hired Bruce Willis <laughs> and Steve Buscemi. Been Batfleck. And Batfleck and fucking had Liv Tyler suck mm -hmm. them all off on the launch pad. And They're going to launch Wilson them was like, a, that's right. scariest environment imaginable. That's all you had to say. Scariest environment Fresh imaginable. Wow, yeah. wow, man. Wow. Very wow. Man. That is, that is scary. Fucking impression, man. Mm -hmm. Well, they're getting out there and they're working on it. And I'll tell you what, since we're finding ways to have more power in space how since we're finding ways to destroy obstacles that occur to us in space well the next step is to be able to get further out there than we are right now right mm -hmm. you know what i mean well we're gonna need some stronger engines to do that friends rust wow in a in a space first wow. scientist test ion thrusters powered by iodine wow Powered by iodine. Wow. That it's, sounds like a thruster to me. Iodine, ion, wow. engine. Wow. Uh, it's an improbability engine. Right? Powered by iodine. Wow. I know uh, it's not the same guy, but those guys always remind me of each other. So uh, I'm just putting it in there. I'm just putting it in there. I don't care. <laughs> I'm saying we have more power. We have more thrust. We're about to be able to destroy fucking satellites and asteroids and Russians, whatever the fuck else might be out there in low <laughs> orbit. We're going to plow the road like Bill Pullman in Independence Day, and we're going to get the fuck out there and figure out what is happening on the other planets in our solar system, starting with M-A-R-S, Mars. Yes. Now, scientists warn about false fossils. 
False, false, right. And now there's solar winds and movement and patterns and stuff. We don't necessarily understand. It may react differently than how it does with the soil here on Earth. It may look like something different than what we're used to. So be careful out there. Now, at the same time, I have to wonder when they say scientists and they say warning about fossils. Is it possible that those scientists work for a little outfit you might have heard of called the United States federal government and they might have a reason to cover up fossils that are on Earth because they already sent somebody out there? Mm. Or maybe, maybe that's how we got here and that's why there's traces of life on Mars because eventually things get so fucking bad that you have to shoot people onto another planet to start over and that's what we did and how we got to Earth in the first place. Oh! Mm. I mean, maybe... Mm. It's very possible, man. All I'm saying is you got to be careful when you get out there. Now, luckily, we've got plenty of fucking resources because there's enough oxygen in the lunar regolith to support billions of people on the oh. moon. Well, that's great because we're going to need a goddamn gas station on the moon. That we're is gonna right. We're going to need a gas station and a strip club and a casino immediately. And plenty of oxygen. Be, and plenty of oxygen for them Should to breathe. Breathing it. Right? Now, what's the hard part? It's breaking free of Earth's gravity. Once you get to the moon, it's easy to fly away you from there. You want easy street, bro. Yeah, man, it's getting there. This stuff. So you got to refuel when you get to the moon. The moon. The moon. The moon. And that being the case, you wouldn't have to take as much fuel with you when you launch, which would make your craft lighter and easier to launch into space. Blah, 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 right? All right, DCM, we'll see you, buddy. Have a good one, man. Later on. Uh, now, okay, so trying to put people on the moon is the next step to putting people on Mars. All right, we've got to send people out there with the Artemis missions. we got to get them on the moon, living on the moon, where they're close enough that if something goes wrong on the moon, we can pick them up in a couple of days, hopefully. Right. Get them back, and maybe they won't die. Like this lady right here, Jessica Watkins, who will be the first black woman to live and work on the space station. Well, good for her. That's well and good. And I know you're saying, oh, is that so important? The fact is she's an astronaut. Isn't that a bigger accomplishment than whatever skin color you're born Absolutely. with? Absolutely. And I would certainly agree that the amount of fucking school this woman went through and the amount of degrees she holds are a far bigger accomplishment than something that you're naturally born with. However, still good for her for doing it. And luckily, wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you know it? We have exclusive footage. <laughs> of her arriving oh to her new workstation on the moon. Let's take a look real quick. It's good to be black on the moon. Oh, God damn it. Oh, <laughs> son of a bitch. She was so close. So close. So close. Didn't quite make it. Oh, that's right. All right, so we're looking to colonize further out into the solar system, but that may mean that we need to look for exoplanets as well. Some of you are aware of Proxima Centauri, the closest star to us, and planets B and C, if I'm not mistaken, have a chance of maybe being viable for us, but it'll take a really long time to get there. However, we're looking for some other stuff too. The mystery of an Earth-sized hidden planet discovered on the outer edges of our solar system Leave scientists baffled. Wait, there's another one? What? I've been telling you this for years. Now, here's my question. Is it in our solar system or not? Because they're saying this might be planet nine. What? It might just be such a long orbit, we don't even fucking know about it, man. Now, that's interesting. And a similar size? Hmm. Might be something to like that. Like in our solar system? It says it's outside what we call our solar system, but it's pretty close, so... It's possible. Right? People have talked about this planet maybe being there before. They don't know if this is that one, or maybe it's the deal, but it's very interesting nonetheless. However, it's not something we can get to immediately. You know what I mean? Right. We still got to keep looking for viable places to expand into. A new space mission is launching to try and detect life in the closest star system to Earth. That's Alpha Centauri, right. of course. Right? Very interesting, man. They're looking to see if there's any traces of life there. Because, yeah, we couldn't get there in our lifetimes now. But they got them crazy iodine engines, and it's only a matter of time before that <laughs> gets better. And if there's life there, it might support us too. And goddamn, man. I mean, with, with this is some shit where people used to say this kind of thing is impossible. You know what I with mean? With iodine engines, I mean, anything's possible. <laughs> Jot that down, man. Right? You got it. 
I'm really interested to see what this comes back with after they do all of that. That's crazy, man. But, uh, I, like I said, dude, there's a hidden planet right here at home, too. So there's several candidates. There's several candidates for what might be possible. Not just that. Check this one out, too. There's a hot Jupiter out there. Hot it's Jupiter. Jupiter's hotter sister, hot Jupiter. Nice. An exoplanet with an unusually quick orbit of 3.2 days. Woo! It's 750 light years away. Now, that's closer than the nearest star. That's closer than Alpha Centauri, sure. But still... As it stands right now, it would take us a fucking thousand years just to get to hot Jupiter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, again, I don't know that it's a viable candidate. It's interesting. Maybe it'd be worth considering for mining when we figure out how to travel in a much more That's efficient way. That's what I'm talking about. You Hell know? yeah, These dude. These planets we can't live on. Obviously, we can't live on them. I just them, think but... we have to throw away this notion that we are for some reason confined to Earth and the materials that are here. Fuck you. Mind the galaxy, I'm dude. just thinking about like, can I bring Jupiter? And the other one's like, uh, which one? And she's like, uh, hot Jupiter? Okay, hot Jupiter can come. Okay, sorry. Right. Yeah. As long as that's hot Jupiter. <laughs> but we still need another candidate to move everything to. And the main candidate these days has been Mars. Right. Main complaint about Mars is, well, Mars don't have a fucking magnetosphere. It doesn't have a, an orbit that works right. It gets off its axis. The weather, all these things. It's impossible. Right. That's where it always comes back to. Well, it's not just like Earth, so it's impossible. Hmm. Uh... Are you sure about that, though, man? You'd be surprised how technology might impress you oh, out yeah. there Lots sometimes. Oh, yeah, shit you do every day it was impossible at An some absolutely point. absolutely bonkers plan to give Mars an artificial magnetosphere. Whoa, Whoa dude. What were we just talking about a few weeks ago? If the solar system isn't made if it isn't made to support our type of life, then we force it to. What do we do on Earth? When it's too hot, we make air conditioning. When it's too cold, people steal your furnace. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, in Canada, yeah. Right. When it rains too much, we go inside. We find ways to make harsh environments work for us. And that is why humanity is the, the top species on Earth. Well, why stop there? Why stop there? If you have the opportunity to keep this motherfucker from wobbling and give it a magnetosphere, shit, man, Let's that could make a it. big difference. Hell yes. The question is, how do you do that? You're not going to believe this plan, friends. So as you might know, Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos, right? Right. Phobos has a, an eight-hour uh, orbit it goes around the planet pretty, pretty fucking quickly. You know what they want to do? Check this out, Phil. This is fucking crazy, man. They want to put artificial magnetosphere emitters on the moons of Mars. Whoa. So as they fly around it, they create from an exterior source that's permanently there an emitter that forces the magnetic poles of Mars to align into a grid that would help it be hospitable for humanity. That's Whoa. fucking crazy. That is way crazy. That's, that's terraforming. Bonkers. That's it is. That's terraforming. That's man. God I mean, damn it, dude. Fuck. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. That's space shit right there. It is, dude. That is that's, the that's absolute real G heights. space shit right there, man. That's the absolute heights of what that's humanity what is capable of. Now I will say this. I like this plan. I'm happy to be a part of it. I'm glad that we're at least trying some shit here. But what I will say is that their initial test of creating artificial power on Phobos and Deimos, which are the moons that surround Mars, did in fact create a problem. Now, unfortunately, the records we have from them trying to deal with this problem are sparse. And they're not particularly high resolution. The images had to be sent here to Earth at the very last minute. But as much as I'm ready to colonize Mars, we have to be very careful, friends, because they've already had problems. And I know what you're out there saying. You're going, well, what kind of problems are we talking about? You know? I was saying that. What could possibly happen on Mars? Well, lucky for you, my friends, you watched the Fright Power Hour. 
and we have an exclusive photo what? from the very last moments of the artificial magnetosphere generator version one on Phobos. What? Prepare yourself. This is a terrifying image. Disturbing friends. to say the least. And here it is, guys. Take a look at what can go wrong when you try to create power on one of the moons of Mars. Dun, dun, dun! No! Oh my god! Ah! 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 You would need a rocket launcher just to stay alive! Ah!